Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast. Today I had a really great chat with Karen Graves, who uh, is a good friend of mine, and we talk a lot about uh, age discrimination, uh, the challenges that she's been facing, um, different working styles, working um, agility, the multiple generational space we're currently occupying. Um, so in the workforce, you know, you have people from 16 to 80. Um, importance, importance of mentoring and um, and how we can tackle age discrimination, uh, which could also start to address uh, some of the gender-related issues. I hope you enjoy it. Hey, it's Lewis. Welcome to the podcast. Enjoy our conversations anytime, anywhere. Cool. And we're yeah. live. Um, thank you so much for joining me. It's great. We've had so many great conversations and we should have recorded all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so God knows what we've talked about. Um, but anyway, um, so we're going to talk about age, Ooh. age yes. discrimination, working styles, yep. all of that stuff. Yeah, I think so. And the multi-generational workspace as well. Yeah. I think that's something that um, we need to understand a lot more and how we start to think about how we... We, we challenge that within within companies yeah. uh, and also I'd like to cover a bit of the talent piece as well because I do um, I think the way we talk about talent we talk about it in a particular way and I think we need to reframe that as well and a lot of this conversation might be from a self-interested perspective um, as to sort of where I find myself in my age and stuff so uh, so kind of go with, we start that. with that oh yeah okay, so your backgrounds so, okay so um, I, I moved to London when I was 18 um, you know, just a bog standard comprehensive um, education. Um, sort of um, didn't do particularly well at A levels to get where I really wanted to go. So, so came down to London and fell into, like most people, fell into the insurance and reinsurance market. Um, so I've been a part of the Lloyds and the, and the London market for coming up for thirty years, nice, nice. <laughs> which means that I'm probably knocking on a bit now. And so <laughs> I've spent many years um, lying about my age. I work for a French company. Most women lie about their age in a French company. Why do they do that? I have no idea, but they just do. So, um, <laughs> and I think it's, it is all, it's, so many things are linked together. But so I'm, I'm boldly telling people these days that I'm 53. Um, uh, and uh, um, no. um, thank you. Um, but, but it is an important thing to say because it's made me consider a lot of things and, and how I feel about my future career because... Um, I think that's often tied up with perception and, and how you look, and um, and I think there is a there is a, there is a gap between um, the way companies are structured around a traditional model that I would describe as traditional model, which we can talk about, yeah, and yeah. how the reality of things in the world we live in today. I think there's a big disconnect between the two, um, and I find myself um, at that point um, now. Yeah. Um, what, what's the disconnect? Um, I think there's, there's this, we, we run companies and we have office hours and we have structures that are very much predicated on this nine to five working environment, which yeah. came out of all sorts of reasons back in the early sort of, um, uh, sort of, sort of Henry Ford and the, uh, and, and the factories and yeah. having yeah. workforces that needed to be in shift patterns and so on. So, um, and, and we've sort of stuck to that model for, for years and years. And, and I think that's kind of linked to the industrial revolution. Um, we're in a completely different industrial, we're in the middle of a kind of like the, digital, you know, a, a yeah, digital yeah. industrial revolution. And we don't need to operate on that model anymore. And I think we need to recognize that and start to operate differently because we're trying to shoehorn um, a, a dated structure often into, yes. uh, we're trying to shoehorn people into a dated structure when they can work differently. And the way they live their lives and the influences they have um, are, are driven by, by other external forces and, and, and we're not um, linking up with that in a business perspective. Yeah, so no, that's true. Th it's, true. That, it's that traditional model yeah. of, so when you sort of, you went to school, you worked, you retired. Yeah. And you had it in a framework of nine to five, generally speaking, all right? Um, uh, as, uh, we, we're going to have to do some generalizations here. Right? Yeah, that's so fine. It's not going to work. So, um, uh, so please excuse that. But that, that's kind of, but that's broken. You know, we've got young Why people. Why do you think it's broken? Because I think there have been many drivers these in the last few years. If you think about maybe from 20, 2008 onwards when we had the sort of the financial meltdown. And then people's, and that changed in terms of people's financial ability to retire when they wanted to retire in yeah, their mid-50s yeah. and 60s. 
Um, and then also I think you have to layer onto that the fact that we are very different people now at 53 or 50 or whatever it might be, or 60, than we were 50 or 60 years ago. I mean, I, I you know, my grandparents, at, or my grandmother and father at 53 were very different animals than I am. Yeah, no, very true. So uh, we're fitter. Um, we have a different intellectual view about how we um, approach the world. Yeah. Um, and I think we don't always... I think we need to play catch-up from a business perspective in how we utilise those drivers. Um, because I certainly feel um, that... Uh, I, I think it's, it's a combination of things. I, I felt, maybe incorrectly, um, that, that perhaps at, at this age I felt I was being sidelined because I think it's a conversation around talent as well. And I still might view myself as side a talented mind, person. And sidelined in, in, in the company you're yes. working in? Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe incorrectly, um, yeah. and it's a wonderful company. I'm going to sort of say that it is a wonderful company. But I, I was feeling like I had, um, I'd kind of plateaued out, and I'm still ambitious. Um, and I think when we talk about talent, and we have companies focusing on talent, they tend to focus on young talent. Um, just by nature, I'm, I, I'm very willing to be challenged on that, by the way. But I think that's something that people do. Is they when they talk about talent, they talk about young talent. But actually, you have talent right across your organisation. And if we look at, you know, I think since 2014, we've now had, we've now got five generations in the workplace. 16 to 80 years old or something. Uh, so, so there's yeah. a traditionalist. I'm going to do this now. No, because, do it, do it. Do all it. right, because it, I'm going to throw a bit of practical stuff in here. So the traditionalists were born before 1946. You've got baby boomers of 46 to 64. You've got Generation X, which is 65 to 76. <laughs> Gen Y, which is 1977 to, to 97. And Generation Z, God love them, born after 1997. After like, I'm and not so Generation there's now, Z. actually, so, um, so I am a Generation X. I thought I was a baby boomer, but I'm not. <laughs> I've just scraped into Generation X, so I'm feeling quite happy about that. But um, So what were you? You would be a Gen X as well. Yeah, I was born in 81. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, you're a Generation Y. Oh my God, Excellent. Lewis, you're really young. <laughs> but, thank you, thank you. That's but, okay. But you know, but the interesting thing is those labels. Um, you end up thinking, oh, do I demonstrate those? I don't think I de demonstrate personally the characteristics of, yeah. of somebody born in 1965, which is when Generation X is categorised from. Um, and I, and I, but I, I feel like um, at, at, at now. What I'm looking for in, in my career going forward, um, and I th view myself as a talented person in, in many respects, and you know, again, willing to be challenged on that, but what I want from a career now is, is what a lot, I think, of the, the Gen Y and the Generation Z may be looking for in that agility and flexibility around how they work. So yeah. I'm looking for an age-appropriate career going forward right. as, I, as I, I could be working for another 20 years yeah. Well, there's no retirement age, so you there's can no work retirement as long age. as you... And we've got to get over yeah. talking about not to... I, I know it's, it's one of those protected characteristics now in, in age. It's not something that you can discriminate no. over. No. Yeah. So I think we've... But we've still got to have conversations around it. And I, I could be working for another 20 years, yeah. potentially. Um, maybe because I want to, maybe because I have to. Yeah. Probably a combination of both, Absolutely. if I'm honest. Yeah. And so I am not going to spend the next 20 years not utilising my experience. But I want to do it now in a way, and I think if you read the literature around this, it's, it's something that, that comes out, is that as you get older and you have more experience, you want to be able to use your experience and your skill sets in, for a company in a, in a sort of more flexible, more agile way. Not necessarily being... The, the nine to five. The, the, the nine thing, to yeah. five aspect. And I don't necessarily really have had a nine to five job for a long time. But I want my value to, to be, when I'm there, I want to be adding value, yes, but I now yeah. want and recognise that it's also important to have a good work-life balance. But it shouldn't shouldn't mean the fact that I want to work a bit differently, that I'm not any more serious about my career than I was 20 years ago. Absolutely. But I think yeah. there's a perception around age, and, and age no longer means senior. You know, seniority in companies is no longer linked to age. True. It, it's linked. It's more meritocratic, I think. Um, and so you've got that sort of management hurdle to think about as to how you actually handle that um, and, and not um, sideline your talent. If it's older talent, I think you need to it start to encompass... Um, there's lots of ways, I, I, I think, that, that companies can utilise talent and young talent together. I, had, um, I read an interesting stat um, 
uh, a while ago, which was in the Independent in, at the end of uh, 2017, which said three quarters of 25 to 34 year olds consider themselves discriminated against for being too young. And over half of over 55s say they have been discriminated against unfavorably. Interesting. So, so we, you, you get this discrimination about age at both ends of the scale. Well, you feel like you're discriminated at both yeah, ends. Yeah, or you, you feel yeah. like it's been discriminated. Yeah. So, and I think that's, I certainly have colleagues within that sort of 25 to 34 age group who go for roles and then be told they're not Because you often, you often get feedback from clients. They're not quite experienced enough or they're overqualified for the role. Yes. What, what you really want is, you know, can someone do the job? It doesn't matter whether they've oh, no. done something bigger yep. or could they start? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think, I think for b being too young, let's say, um, you know, it's often difficult. People are very scared to, given the current economic environment, to give someone yeah. a chance so for yes. the younger people. Yep. For, the older, for the older people who would l just want to do this particular job they've, they've, been, uh, they've applied for, yep. then the, the employer gets scared if they've done something bigger. Yeah, and you often get that feedback, and that's, that's a big challenge. And how? And but it, it's a question of uh, understanding what people want from what they're being asked to do. Does it really? I think yeah. companies have this vision in mind of what everybody should look like. Yes. Yeah. And and and, and be. And I think uh, I I'd like to start to challenge that a bit because I I think I, I certainly want to work in a way going forward um, how I think. Um, younger colleagues or the, the, the younger generations coming into the workforce want to, to work as well. I really think this nine to five thing is 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 a broken concept. The other I think there, there are roles that you have to be around for. I accept that and in our industry with underwriting and broking, there are busy times of year and renewal periods, etc. Um, so I get that you have to be around, but I think we have to move really move away from this um, this this sort of construct and, and actually look at people's value. Yeah, no, I agree. The other thing is also the the way people work and mindset is necessary crosses crosses age because yep. you can you can get really young people with uh, actually not such a forward thinking innovative yeah. mindset and vice versa. Yes, I've been I've been really interested in this uh, in this growth mindset. Okay, this lady called Dr. Carol Dweck. Okay, and, um, she kind of coined the phrase for for like education teaching young people, but it's it's the kind of idea that um, you can um, continue to learn, develop, improve. Etc. Yeah. Um, and I think whatever age you're of, you have that mindset now. That, that will. I, I, and I think that that's. I think that's really interesting because in, I was asked to to start to, to look at age as a as a driver for, for something else other than our conversation here today. And, and and you know that one of the things I do is I, I'm very involved in a gender network. Yeah. And I started looking at age, and I actually then I think age is a. I've come to 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 an idea, and I'm starting to try and articulate it better, that age is a huge driver um, across all of the other characteristics that perhaps we, we feel we fail at, whether it's gender, whether it's LGBT issues, whether it's class, um, educational diversity. This age theme, it's one of the common, it, it's a commonality amongst us all. Um, it doesn't matter if you're black, white, straight, gay, you know, straight, gay, it doesn't matter. Age is something that we all cope with. Um, and I think things are happening to people in life these days, much later in life, yeah. whether it's families, um, you've got people caring for, for older relatives because they're living much longer. True. Um, and so w when you look at this from a gender perspective, male or female, these are, I these are issues that affect all of us. And I think if we tackle age things, we then start to tackle some of the other related issues around that. Um, and I, I, w I often wonder if we, if we just start to do age really well, um, and how we manage that, we might actually then just start to naturally tackle some of the other um, uh, inequalities that we might face in the workplace. Because when you start to look at age and what you need, how you need to support somebody, and then it becomes a question of supporting them, whether they're looking after children, it can be male or female, yes, whether they're looking yeah. after elder relatives, again, the same thing. You take it out of just that gender um, sort of framework, for example, yeah. and I, I think there's if you start to tackle age well and manage those drivers, it just automatically will start to to improve things in other areas. I think no, it's no, a I huge. Yeah. I think it's a huge driver, and I hadn't really considered it as as so important before. I'd always felt that there were, um, you know, and, and I've had men challenge me on this because they feel, um, as as in in the older sort of as you get towards your sixties, they feel discriminated against 
for being older yeah. uh, and their yeah. value. It's about how you feel valued by yes. a company. Yeah. But, you know, I've always felt that women have always been viewed on how they look and what their age is. And that, that sort of natural... In the well, workplace. In the yeah. workplace. And, and that sort of, well, you know, don't need to worry about her because she's going to, you know, she'll just be leaving soon or whatever. Yeah. You know, that's not the case. Um, and may, no, maybe definitely. But then also maybe it's worse when, when they're younger because we have this mother gap. Equally. Uh, it, yeah. it, can, it, can yeah. it, can, it can work either way. So I think we get viewed... I think age is a very um, visual thing. Do you think we're getting better now? I don't know. I'm not sure is the answer. I think it's one of those things that's not really... I don't think people are really focusing. I think there's a lot of talk around it. Um, and there's a lot of... You can find lots of um, research on this. And, and um, I, I'm a big fan of the Harvard Business Review. And they come up with some great articles around multi-generational um, uh, issues. But th there was something I, I came across which was done by Barclays Business Banking. Um, and um, who were looking at how companies are being established. And they were noting that the fastest growing age group of UK business owners in the last 10 years has been the over 65s. Yeah, no, I saw that. That's and that, I think yeah. that's really interesting. And they came up with a, a, some tips about um, how, as, as mature entrepreneurs or oldpreneurs, which I hate that. <laughs> I, mean, I hate made up words, but <laughs> oldpreneurs, okay. So, um, but I think the list is, is relevant for everybody. And it's sort of know your subject, know your business strategy, get tech savvy, yes, uh, you know, definitely. get tech savvy, have confidence in your abilities, um, look after your well-being. That's huge. Looking after I'm your well-being so is huge, is huge. That's and a, I think that's, 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 that's yeah. one of these layers around age that we're having to cope with in the working environment because we're all living much longer. We're all much fitter. Yeah, yeah, no, much, I mean, we're much that's, a whole, than we that's were. a whole like ten and, and, podcasts. And mentally, then. and mentally yeah. as well as, as yeah. our expectations are very different. Yeah. Um, than than they were. But if you really get into your your fitness and your health and mentally, it's, it helps you so much. Oh, it does. No, I'm I'm a big fan of that. And then I was, um, I then started to look at. I've been asked to talk to um, a group of of, of younger um, uh, people in, in in the workplace, um, uh, and. Uh, about personal branding. Um, and I started to consider what that meant. And I, I, I came across a list that Warren Buffett came up with. All right, interesting. Okay. Who's what, 90 something and still? Which is incredible. Doing um, well. <laughs> and, and one of the things he says is um, invest in yourself. He reads books, he challenges himself, he takes courses, he learns new Great things. Mindset. And right. investing yourself is a huge thing, yes, whether yeah. you're young or whether you're old. And it's and I think if you if you um, invest in yourself, then you're automatically more able to um, take advantage of perhaps a new framework in a in a company. Um, or it, you know the, the the drivers that the companies are looking for these days. Then I think you become a more relevant um, uh, uh, asset for them. Yes, right, definitely. So I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of that, and I, and I think you. So I, I I try and do those things, and and I, I, I there is a certain level of frustration around how 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 do how do we as companies recognise that companies or individuals? I think it's both. I think it's both. I think I think companies need to recognise that people don't stop when they're fifty. That they're, they're, yeah. they're not just going to go down until they... Some people may want to. It's about choice, isn't yeah, it, as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? The quality of opportunity. It's, and, and, yeah. and so that you need to harness your experience. And then I often, in, and in talking to younger colleagues, they don't have the softer skills that perhaps we have as, um, as the older generational workforce because we've, we've had different drivers throughout our career where everything's think it's quite technically based these days, social media plays a big part in, in how you interact with, with groups and, and talking to people yes, um, yeah. and how you behave at interviews and all those kind of softer skill sets are not quite so prevalent. Well, now there need to I be think. more and more. Uh, but, but they need to be more and more. Yeah, and so yeah. um, you need to, the, the older generation are fantastic mentors for the younger generation. Great, and also vice versa. And vice versa as well. I absolutely, uh, absolutely agree with that. McKin the yeah. McKinsey, um, the McKinsey Global Institute did a really interesting report in 2018. So it was on automation and the future of the workforce, and they concluded that um, so the demand going forward 
um, is for technological, social, emotional, and high cognitive skills. So those skills, the demand for those skills will rise by 2030. Yeah. And if you think about the insurance industry, you've got AI, which is playing, we're going to play a massive part in, yep. in risk, in marketing. So I think whatever age you are, if you're developing those skill sets, then you're going to be working really think, nicely so. with your new colleague, yeah, which will be a robot or yeah. whatever. I mean, it's in, in theory, adopting those technologies within within our um, industry um, should, in theory, take away the, the, the drudgery of many aspects and, and, and allow people to be more creative. Yes. You know, and I think our industry is an incredibly creative industry. Um, in really? Insurance. Yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. I really, really, anything, any, anything anybody makes... Or, or, or builds or sends to somewhere or, or comes up with or, or um, from a medical perspective or drug-related perspective or, or, or a new piece of kit or flying off to Mars or wherever it might be, we as an industry find a product to help them manage their risk in that yeah, regard. Yeah. And I think we're hugely innovative. And so I, think, I don't necessarily think in structures of companies in our industry match that innovation. Yeah, and the kind yeah, of so. people they're engaging, and then just because somebody has some grey hairs doesn't mean they're not they don't want to be part of that world. They can add value. Definitely, no, definitely. And I think if they have the right mindset, yes, and I then I, I, I think they're going to be okay, um, working until yeah. whenever they want. Okay, I'm I'm so not perfect, but I, I I will. There is a sense of frustration with me sometimes when I have meetings or meet other people, um, and that they they automatically assume that they don't need to be interested in a more social media, technological, um, AI world. But they, you absolutely do. Oh, it's, I mean, but know, it's, it's here. And it, 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 it's here, and it, it doesn't matter. You can look at it just from, from a work perspective, but you can also look at it from your social life perspective if you have grandchildren, if you have yeah. friends and different, you know, whatever it could be, that you need to have a way of, of interacting and understanding what's driving people. Yes, um, yeah. and being able to take part in it. I, I just hate it when people say, well, I'm not doing that, I do. I'm not, blah, 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 I don't do Instagram, I don't do this. I do, hell, I love it. Yeah. I uh, absolutely love it. I would never talk, I'd never, I would never have half as much interaction with my son unless I did all this stuff. I don't think we're on Instagram together, so I'll add you. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, my grandma, she's 96, she has an iPhone. Yeah. She's got an iPhone. I mean, I think my, it's... My mum's a silver surfer, so I, I, and I love that. That's great. I love that. It's, it's this, I think it's, for, for me, it's the, the mindset. And yeah. if people have the right mindset, I don't think it really matters what age. No. And, so, and they'll start to do better. But I, I think there's a, that sort of expectation that, that you get to a certain age, you don't need to do certain things. With some people. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I just think that's rubbish. Yeah. So how would you then change the, <laughs> <laughs> you know, making more agile or... Using new technologies to enable well, I, people yeah, to... Well, I think one of the things for, for me is if we look at mentoring, for example, yeah. and, um, and um, new projects within a company, um, I, I think there's quite often when you have a new product or a new idea and it perhaps has a technological basis yes. for it, insure tech or whatever it might be, there is a tendency to people and staff that with young people. For yeah. a wonderful better phrase, I hate these, this, but you know what I mean. Yeah. With with with, with young people, all right? Because I'm clearly so old with young people, but actually within that, so I think within companies, rather than just have a like a vanilla mentoring scheme, you need to have some kind of scheme where you have a project. You need to look at that project and the team and decide that you're going to have some older people in there. Yeah. Older people yeah. in there, not because they can answer the tech questions, but they might be able to say, right, we try to do this. 20 years ago, but the technology wouldn't allow us to. But when we were thinking about doing it, these are our problems. If you're telling me you can solve these problems, then this is a great idea, and I can tell you some of the parameters that you might be interested in from a business perspective within your modeling. Yeah. Right? But, yeah. So that, that I think, so you need to, I, I, it's about, it's a bit like the, the question about what makes a good board these days. Yeah, definitely. And it, it's about having a diverse group of people. Yeah, identify what skills you need yeah. and then start and to... Then, and then factor in yeah. the fact that, you, that it is good to have somebody there that says, um, we did talk about this 15 years ago and this was an issue. Is that no issue? No, go, no, we can solve that now. Yeah, I mean, the, the so, more opinions, the better yeah, decision the, making, absolutely. the better options. So I think we don't yeah. do that. We often silo things. So I would yeah. say that every company internally, if you have a project or you have a, um, you know, um, 
something, that you, an acquisition you're working on or something, make sure that you're peopling it, yes. populating yes. it yeah. with people yeah. of all skill sets. Um, and those skill sets will involve people of different ages. Definitely. You find people hire badly, typically. They hire people like themselves. Yes. And they don't think about the skill sets they're looking for. No. And that's a big, that's a big issue. If they, if they take a little bit of time and sit down and think about you know, why they want a certain type of person, and the different types of skills, then you can, I think, start yeah. to address these issues. Yeah. I, I um, so what happens, though, if you know, they need someone working uh, like 8 till 10, hardcore? I think that's it's, something that you... I, I, I think that's... I don't know the answer to that. No. I think it depends on what your objectives are and your time frames are. I think if people are part of a team and they have a, an objective to aim for, I think everybody will pitch in at whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is that if you have those people on those teams, use them when you need to use yeah, them yeah, for their particular skill sets. Yeah, yeah. No, it's great to do that. I mean, it's if just you it's, can. A, yeah, it's a bit, yeah. you know. Um, I think firms are going, it's, it's, it's a slow, it's, I think it's a slow mo moving, it, it's very slow moving. Because people still like, you know, someone's a full-time employee, you know, managers. And I'm interested to hear how you've experienced managing all these different ages. Um, but it's a tough one, right? I mean, you want to feel, it's like the working from home thing. Um, oh, yeah. You know, it's quite hard to manage. You need to have the trust there. Well, it's a trust level. I think it's the trust. Yeah. The trust aspect is a, is a huge driver in that. Um, yeah. uh, and, and I think that's something that I think is changing, slowly changing. But that, that's, that, has, that trust aspect has changed a bit I think in yeah. I say that I'm thinking about that now. it depends I, I think I mean, it, has. it depends like if you've just hired someone and you don't know them then you want to see that you'd like to work with them get you know make yeah, friends, get friends with them yeah. connect and stuff um, so there's a lot of issues around it I think as, as we go forward and technology massively changes the organizational design and structures and maybe we'll get to a scenario where yeah I did I mean we, we've done that here. Yes. I mean, we have all our systems are web-based. We have these phones on our laptops and our mobiles and well, everything. You know, I mean, I we, we can work from the beach in Cape Town. Right. And, and, that, and you know, and that's one of my, my things. I think you know, we, I know people have a bit of a downer about social media and, and technology. You know, because it, it can be poorly managed and, and it can be a very sort of um, invidious in people's lives in terms of, of how destructive it can potentially be to to people. But if you think about it when you wake up in the morning, um, I would rather wake up and deal with my emails, you know, um, every time you pick one, every time you pick an iPad up, your iPhone up or whatever it, whatever it is, you are potentially working. And so yeah. deal with, you can deal with the, the mundane aspects and then come in and really think about something. Um, but companies need to recognize that you're doing that stuff maybe in a different framework than they're expecting you to do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it doesn't mean you don't do it and it's a trust thing. Yeah. And it's being bold, isn't it, I think, about, yeah, yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah, But I still go back for me, I think, going forward, it's, it's mindset, it's continuing to learn, it's being resilient, tech savvy, building your brand. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm hugely, you know, I think this, this tech savviness, it, it's sort of, you know, I, it's one thing that does irritate, <laughs> irritate me about some of my friends that, you know, they don't, they just seem to think, well, now I, feel, I'm, I don't need to, social media, I don't need to. Or tech techy, why, why do I need to understand that? And I just think, oh, for heaven's sake. But to what, to, would you say the majority of your friends just aren't interested in learning or experimenting or it, trying? Yeah, or I think I think there becomes a, I wouldn't say all of them, um, but I think in certain, you know, I've, I've, got, I've got friends who are and GPs, for example, they're just so not interested in any of this, you know, just yeah. not, not at all. And yet you, you pick up the paper today and um, you find that, we need to be. We need to ditch half of the old NHS um, uh, uh, IT systems. Get rid of the fax machines they're still using, Crazy. and actually have a an integrated um, uh, IT answer to being able to ensure that our records are where they should be, with who needs to see them, and the access is is there, so that we get better health advice, for example. And that Absolutely. was in the paper today, and um, and I just thought. <laughs> You know, and also in the paper today, it was a really interesting article um, about how uh, talking to people who are working longer, people who are 60, 60 plus working in, um, in, on, um, in industry yeah. um, who are choosing to work because it's, it's a social, I, I think the social aspect of work is huge as well. 
Yeah. I mean, we have well-being you get from working. Oh, it's great. We have um, my mum works here for us. Is she? Yeah, that's really cool. She comes in two days I a week, um, sometimes three. Really? And yeah, so she's worked with me from since I started my business. That's great. And I don't think she'll want me to say how old she is. Oh no, it's all right. She's, uh, so her prerogative. <laughs> um, but she loves it. And my dad, he retired, so he was um, a, a risk manager. Yeah. And then about five months in, he was like, "This is really going to be really boring." And, uh, and now he works for my cousin running okay. his finance department and he's 70 something now. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, uh, um, you know, like o- older people have like um, a lot of knowledge that they can share, you know, the mentoring yeah, aspect. But also for me, I just keep going back to it, but um, the mindset is yeah. so important. Yes, it is. Because if you're open to learning stuff, I mean, it doesn't matter how old you are, you're learning. That's, that's, you know, that's another on, on Warren Buffett's little list, too. How do we have? Which he said, you know, be a lifelong learner. But, there we go. Yeah. Be a lifelong learner. And yeah. I, I, uh, I, I mean, I, somebody um, gave me a link the other day to something which I, it's a fascinating um, app called uh, Course Era. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I've, oh, I've done man. a few courses on yeah. I've started doing that. You know, um, it's outstandingly good with, you've got the Wharton Business School, Duke Business School, yeah. uh, the, the, doing on these online courses for 50 quid. They're amazing. They're called... Uh, uh, so I, and I'm, I'm doing one with, um, uh, at the moment, with MoMA the, um, uh, in, in New York on an oh, art yeah, yeah. course. Yeah. And, and, and it's, abs- it's, it's fantastic. It's completely amazing. They're called um, they're MOOCs, Massive Online Learning Communities. Is that what, okay, yeah. thank you. Okay. Because now, uh, with technology, rather than educating 100 people in a year group at Yale, you've got the world. Yeah. And so people who, who can't afford to relocate to America can just access it online. And, and you know, and I, I started this course and, um, and uh, you, you start it, you pay 50 quid, 48 yeah. quid, I think it was, 48 quid. Um, 50 quid. Uh, and... Um, you have access to all of their database and information and, and learning. It's amazing. And you work through this course. I mean, I, it's supposed to take five weeks. I think I'm already like halfway, over halfway through it because oh, it's just like it's great. amazing. The videos, you could, oh, the videos, the chat just, forums just, and stuff. It, I and love and that. I just thought, yeah. wow. And so, so I picked something that I'm interested in that's, that's not work related, but I, you know, I might even now consider doing a, a coding one, how to code. Yeah. I mean, why not? No, yeah. You know, what, why, why not? And I, and I just think that that accessibility to learning is up, it is there through stuff that some of my friends say, well, I'm not, I don't need to use a laptop or I don't need to look at my phone. I'm like, oh, for heaven's sake, this is all you're doing. No, it's, awesome. it's even, I mean, even the, the <laughs> podcast we're doing now. Yeah. I mean, if you think back, um, you know, even like 20 years ago, the, the way to disseminate knowledge was the written word. Yeah. A lot of people can't read in the world. But with, uh, YouTube with podcasting suddenly the spoken word is getting out a lot more yes uh, and so I with these kind of you know this is a kind of like half an hour whatever but you can get a really long format podcast where people are learning yes. quite detailed uh, yeah. subjects and then with the Coursera stuff yeah we're actually just starting to use a digital learning platform yeah as well so our, our guys are going to be and girls are going to be uh, be able to choose which courses and stuff they want to learn Fantastic. online on the smartphone yeah it's great, yeah, and, and none of it's very difficult to uh, to learn how to use. No, it's all, and and I just think that's that that's a bit about all of this development and the way the world has changed in terms of you know over my working life um, from remembering the first WAN computers when they came in and we <laughs> used to fax everything and um, how it's changed. Um, and, and I just think I think how fantastic that is. Yeah. I just think it's fantastic. But have you found? Think it, is it difficult to keep up with such change or no, not? I don't think so. No. I don't personally find it. But then perhaps I'm more curious than than most people about it because yeah. I that's perhaps part of me that has a natural affinity to to I've always liked tech stuff and yeah yeah you know I'd have been a you know I'd love to have been an electrician actually if I could pick anything I'd be a really good electrician so not too late nah <laughs> so it, it's kind of I think you have a, a, a maybe your brains are wired in a certain yeah, way, but yeah. I I've always enjoyed that the new stuff. Yeah, no, me too. But it's interesting to, if we if we ask you know, the friends of yours that don't want to learn all the stuff, is it because it's like hard or an effort, or are they seeing it as a real effort? To, oh, I think we've got to learn. I think it's like a brick wall. I think for them yeah. it's like looking at a brick wall and it's incomprehensible, but they don't want don't quite know perhaps how to make the effort. To start to, to break that yeah. all down. It's interesting. So if we can do some work with, with with people like that around how to use new technology and stuff. Then maybe we'll start to break yeah. down some of the age yeah. discrimination yes. barriers and yeah. And, and so I, 
I'm a big, I'm a big, big, um, I'm a big, big fan of fan of all that. And the one thing I do have really enjoyed over the last, well, however long I've been working, is the fact that you get to work with people of different ages, yeah, and yeah. who come from different environments, um, and and have you know interesting find out about them and have interesting interesting things going on in in their lives. And I I, I really value working with with different age groups yeah you know and if you take the time to work out what's interesting to people you can end up having a fantastic uh, working environment um, absolutely without it being a uh, a toxic or a challenging environment um, and i think that goes up and down the scale as well yeah yeah you know i, I think for me as, a, as an older person in the workforce having a younger manager doesn't bother me right okay they still have to be good have you ever had one Yes, but, yeah. they have to be good. Yeah, I don't mind that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but what I, I also think is important is they have an appreciation of um, what your talents you bring to the table. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's something that 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 I think is part of this managing these these generational yeah things within the within the workplace. Yeah. A lot of interesting challenges to come. There are actually, but I'm I'm here. I, I yeah. So. I, I mean, think sitting here talking to you, the fact that I might be working for another 20 years fills me with a huge amount of pleasure yeah. and also fills me with a massive amount of quite, quite horror as well, actually, if, if I'm honest, um, because I want, to, I want to ensure that I add value and I'm not just um, sidelined. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, with the fact that... Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, I mean, you won't be. Well, the way you know the stuff like you get involved in, the way we've, you I know the conversation so. we've been having. I, I think that it's a it's a very you know, and I'm I'm speaking as a from a, a female clearly perspective. It's I think age is a very a very awkward thing to, to to cope with from your personal own viewpoint about age. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the company's view of age, male or female. I think it's a very. Um, very sensitive subject, yeah, we, no, and, no. And, but, and we need to kind of talk about it. I think because we, we need to work out how we cope with these different drivers in a, in a in a in a different kind of business model. True. That's not this full time education, full time work, full time retirement. Yeah. That's that's gone. That's just gone. Yeah. There's a good book called The Hundred Year Working Life. Okay. So you've mentioned this before. Yeah, I mentioned it before. So you, you end, people end, will probably end up having three different careers. And yeah. if, if you're born now, you'll live to 100 odd. <laughs> so, so long gone are the days of like education, work, retirement. Yeah. You can forget retirement now. Yeah, and I'm um, not sure what that means anymore. No, I mean, yeah. I mean most people can't afford it anyway. The average no, pension cut in the I, UK is. I, I can't afford to. You know, that, that my view is I'm probably, you know, that thought of retiring at 55 is A, never going to happen from a financial <laughs> perspective, and B, God, yeah, I'm just so not ready for that. No. I'm and if you love so what you do, it's, you know, I mean, you just, it's great. <laughs> you just, it's good to do different things and. Yeah. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see, but, but I think if companies can, 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 you know, come up with some kind of mentoring scheme that's not quite as vanilla yeah. as, as mentoring schemes are with, but, but actually yeah, include reverse mentoring in it. And then when you have a project, look at who's on that project and, and actually make a decision to have. A diversity of age within a project. Yeah. Because I th and um and just because something's tech doesn't mean you can't have some different kind of input into a project development. Um, I think that's some that siloing um, is something that would be good to break down. Definitely. So that's kind of where I'm coming cool. from on age, really, and then it kind of you know leads into all sorts of other stuff, isn't it? Well, let's really do another age. podcast on. Uh... Oh, I think. Oh, there's so many really. I think. Um, there's th th nothing in 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 our in the working piece that we, we're in. Nothing's not connected. Everything's yeah. connected. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's LGBT, gender, age, class, religion, whatever it might be. Um, and uh, I think one of the things that we don't talk about enough is educational diversity. That's very true. I think educational diversity is again something. Um, one of the big things I've seen in the marketplace, which which I love, is how professional we've become as a marketplace. Yeah. And yeah. I think there are these days, um, you know, and I, I got involved earlier, um, towards the end of last year, 
in having to put together a apprenticeship scheme for somebody using the government's apprenticeship scheme, Great. which if you can navigate your way through the, the absolute pain in the arse that it is to, it's an incredible way to learn. It is. Ways. Without it coming out, without being burdened by a loan, without being, th there are so many ways these days to start your career straight from school, yes, 16, yeah. 18. Definitely. Do you want to learn on the job and be supported that way? Get this apprenticeship scheme going. I think it's an amazing scheme. Absolutely amazing. It's, it's great. Just so hard to to to, to get down to get it. It is, but I still I, I still think so in the insurance market, if you want to get to a CEO position or you know board level, well, okay, nowadays right. it's quite. Well, I would challenge you, and, and, and I know um, and an Inga gets an Inga gets feel that the lawyers gets cited so many times, but Inga is a classic example of somebody that doesn't have a degree. You know, I mean, and that and that's 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 to be. Hugely, um, you know, for me is, is as much as, as anything else she's done. I think that to me is an e incredible um, achievement. Not because I think it, it, it proves that you can have value and be experienced. You don't have to be the same as everybody else. You're right. I just I'm speaking to my, I'm helping my uh, my cousin's kid who's just about to start up a sick A levels, and they feel at that age a real pressure to do really well at their yeah. A-levels, go to university, get a degree. They get do the their debt. master's maybe. Or yeah, yeah. Degree, so degree, you end you up, know. you know, because so I still, I, I think there's a lot of pressure for young people to, to still do that. Yeah, if, if they want to follow a professional yeah. kind of, I think that's right. kind of career. But I, I, I think that, I mean, the apprenticeship schemes are great. Because oh, you just, don't yeah. have to do it. I don't think companies yeah. take advantage of it. It was just something that I got involved yeah. in. Um, in, in terms of, of looking at, at IT, getting an IT apprentice yeah, yeah. going. And it was just, I was blown away by, you know, how you could come out with a degree um, in two years without any loan, you know, without, that was great. you know, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, nice. and companies we have to, over 250 employees, I think, have to contribute to the, the you know, to it anyway. Yeah. So you've got these massive credits being built up and we're not utilising it. I just think that, 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 that way of thinking, though, um, and, and having um, educational diversity is massively important, and where people's backgrounds are and what drives them. Hugely, you know, yeah. Um, be nice, to, yeah. It'd be interesting. Hopefully, people's views will change on people who don't have degrees, because there has yeah, been a I period of, yeah. you know, the other the other thing is uh, we've been doing a bit of work with a few charities to try and get um, like recovering yeah. drug addicts, alcoholics, etc., yep. back into work. And there's that stigma attached to, to people who have been through that experience. Yep. And trying to get them back back into work. Uh, Which is a lot to do. There is there is a lot to do, but there's lots of other conversations to be had yeah. around this. But I do think um, education university is, is really an interesting one, again, that we don't speak about yeah. um, very often. And the advantages of having a different kind of think around your table. Yeah, definitely. It's really, um, it's really exciting. Yeah. Let's do that on our next podcast. All right, then. Oh, OK. Thank you very much. I really for, enjoyed uh, it. Uh, I love really talking fun. to you. It's good fun. Oh, well. I love talking to you, too. <laughs> and uh, we will both do our best to uh, break down the barriers of age discrimination. Hey, yes, please. Definitely. <laughs> cool. See you later. Bye. Hey, folks. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe in all the usual places. Bye.